one of the first modern oscillator aspects was that the oscillator could be voltage controlled by other oscillators, by other sources, by various effects. And that's what I'm going to show you right now in regard to oscillator one on this ARP2600. I'm going to show you how control voltage can modulate this oscillator. We're going to start off with a low frequency oscillator. Oscillator two has been switched to low frequency, which means, and all this means, is that the frequency of the waveform is too slow to be perceived by our ear. There are too few wiggles. Under 20 wiggles per second is something we can't hear. Right now, this oscillator is set to a frequency that is below that, so we can't actually hear it. However, the wave is still happening, and the voltage that exists in that wave is still happening, and that can be applied to the pitch of voltage-controlled oscillator one, so that that wave that it's generating will change the frequency of oscillator one. And I'll demonstrate. We can hear that the frequency is changing in the shape of a sine wave, which is the shape that is indicated would occur on the modulation coming from voltage-controlled oscillator two. Voltage-controlled oscillator one is set up so that wired within it, voltage-controlled oscillator two will modulate it if you push up this slider and don't enter some other input into this input. So that's what we're seeing. I'm pushing that up. So voltage-controlled oscillator two, which is set to a low frequency, is changing, modulating the pitch of oscillator one in the shape of a sine wave. Now, if we wanted to, we could also set it up so it wasn't a sine wave, so that it was like a sawtooth wave. Let's take the sawtooth output and plug that into this modulation input. You can hear that now it is a sawtooth wave. We could also do the same thing with the square wave. And we could do things like mess with the pulse width of the square wave that would change the way that it is modulating the first oscillator. So the sine wave is not our only option. And that is the joy of voltage control. These different waveforms not only serve as different audio waveforms, but also as different voltage sources for control voltage modulation of frequency. But there's more than that. We also have the opportunity to control the pitch of the first oscillator using the ADSR, which is the envelope. This is the envelope modulating the pitch of oscillator one. If you can have an envelope control the pitch of an, an oscillator, um, you have a lot of opportunities for synthesis. In addition to this, we have something that we haven't talked about, that, but we're going to talk about quite extensively. There is an input, a wired input into oscillator one, where the sample and hold will control the frequency of oscillator one. And sample and hold is a circuit that takes samples of random voltage fluctuations and freezes on those samples. So you get just a bunch of different voltages, which in our case means a bunch of random frequencies. For example, which is a sound I'm sure you're familiar with, but that's what it is. Sample and hold applied to the frequency of an oscillator. We can decide how much this will affect our oscillator by where we put the setting of the slider. This is modulation of the frequency of an oscillator using control voltage. 